Hello everyone, I'm Little McGriddle, and welcome back to Zombie Exodus Safe Haven. We're just gonna continue on, and we are currently fighting the horde of zombies, and now we're just gonna get right into it. With a sudden crackle of gunfire, your team attacks. Bloody ribbons fly from the first few zombies, and then they, f and they flop to the ground and writhe, and the fleeing end of the animated life. More come, and the next barrage of bullets takes them down. When one escapes fatal, attention, Church and Jamie bring it down. Church raises his revolver in both hands as he aims at the closest zombie. Hell half opened and released at legions. Okay. That's the first of the infected fall. You raise your compound bow. Your first arrow goes wide and clips the arm of a different target, so you quickly adjust your aim. As the compound bow shakes in your hands, you readjust and focus but miss more times than you hit. Your heartbeat races and vision turns hazy as the marching undead maintain their approach. Finally, one falls to the field, though another takes its place. How are you doing over there, Chloe? Jamie shouts as the target's a far-off zombie. I'm doing just fine, you say. We're really not doing so fine. As you reach for another arrow to drop back in your bow, you find an empty quiver. With your compound bow out of arrows, you search for backup arrows. You have no spare arrows left. You switch to your machete. With the infected pouring across the field, your team fights on. They show their struggle as they fight, and though they're working as a team, they show the limbs of their ability to move as a coordinated unit. When one survivor falls to make when one survivor fails to make a killing blow, another fumbles along to finish a job. They battle as individuals, and in the days or weeks to come, they'll need to find unity if they want to endure the harsh realities of the apocalypse. Though they battle with a sense of knowing the stakes involved, their faces show how weary and disoriented they've become. Weeks ago, they lived quiet lives, and now they're forced to battle the monsters of the new world. Their spirits reflect their hope to survive this ordeal, but they can't take much more of this. With the constant stream of zombies, you backtrack towards the crash site. Cautious not to overextend and fall to their numbers. Remind me not to piss you off, kid, Riley says with a boisterous laugh. A cloud of gun smoke fogs the field and corpses litter the surface as the rest of the undead step over the fallen relentless in their hunt. You've been the herd and only a few stragglers remain, shuffling towards your team of survivors. I'm out of ammo, Riley yells. Five lie dead to a shotgun, which tosses to the ground before drawing a pistol. Woody reloads, but as the horde closes in, he full holds his fire. As the gunfire dies out, the infected rush forward, their moans louder, their aggression empowered by their hunger. A gust of wind blows a rancid smell of wasted flesh and a bile and soul, and the clomp of feet over the dry grass sounds like the march of a thousand. We need to retreat, Benji says, and drives his machete into the forehead of a zombie. Weary, he yanks a blade out and tumbles backwards. We should consider regrouping, what he says as he fires his rifle, striking the knee of an infected road worker and sending her to the ground. Chloe, this strategy ain't working. We need a new plan. I gotta get back to my ma, Riley says, taking off towards the crash site. We need you here, Riley! Brody hollers across the battle. If you leave, we won't be able to hold them back. Riley shouts a string of curses and returns to fighting. Yeah, you you keep on working alongside your survivor friends there, Riley. Don't be abandoning them. It's not our time. We will survive this church covers his face as a stream of blood flies from an infected soldier. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Priest, sir. Your team reaches the crash site to rejoin the rest of the survivors. As you make it to your pickup truck, you spot a black Bentley luxury car rolling along the road towards a group. Its tented windows hide any passengers, but as it closes on the impassable blockade, the driver's side window rolls down and a woman leans out. Need help? She shouts as the motor cuts. She has a light, almost white, inch long hair and waves her hand excitedly like you're a long lost relative. She leaps from the car, dragging the shotgun out. Hi, name's Gina, the fair-haired woman says, walks, walking towards you. I heard gunfire from just a short stretch away and saw you fighting the dead. If you need a hand with, you gotta decide now, Church yells as he opens the door of his Cadillac. I say we all drive off. If the supply truck don't work, we can leave it. If we go, we're leaving a lot of our supplies, Jamie marches up, drinks, his, drinks the entire contents of a bottle of water and wipes his sweaty brow from his arm, with his arm. Whatever you choose to do, I want to help, Gina says to the group. 
She slides shells into a shotgun as she speaks. We can find new supplies if we're alive, Church says, his eyes bulging. Bailey runs out from the camper, cleaning blood off her baseball bat with a scrap of cloth patterned with balloons and kittens. A baby's bib. What if we go up that hill over there? It's steep, so the infected won't be able to follow. A long wail cuts her off. He glanced back at the field, which the dead have nearly crossed, their numbers seeming never to end. My ma will climb my ma will never climb that hill, Riley shouts. We're leaving. That hill is a great idea, actually, Rachel says, approaching from her grouped vehicle. She has a different weapon in hand now, a high powered rifle. Too many remain to fight in the open. We need high ground. Look, we don't have time for this, Benji shouts, the muscles in his neck bulging. We need to go now. The infected are right there. In a sudden burst of motion, Brody sprints a few hours up the hill. We can make it up to the top with no problem. It won't even be that hard. We can help one another. Heck, I'll carry people on my back. We elected a leader to eliminate this kind of rigmarole. Make up your mind already, Woody says, slapping the back of a disabled car. As you listen to the survivors discuss ideas on how to deal with the horde, you prepare to issue your next order as a new leader. Climbing the hill is the only option. With this steep rise, all zombie horde will struggle to follow, though your own companions may find ascending just as challenging. If your group makes it, those survivors with loaded die firearms can kill the infected. Going up the hill might prove treacherous for some, so saving everyone could pr prove difficult. Some of the group will need to re defend the hill, while others will have to climb up and scout the summit. Right now, you're assuming the top of the hill is safe. Plus, everyone is exhausted and resources are fading. Keeping too many below to fight the infected wastes energy and ammunition. As the group scambles to deal with the oncoming horde, you dash to the front of the caravan and raise your arms to call attention. Everyone get to the hill! We need to work together and get everybody to the top. Work fast and help each other. Look out for infected as they follow. The survivors move towards the hill, though they show apprehension and worry. As the survivors break from the caravan and for the bottom of the hill, the infected packs combine at the edge of the highway into one horde. Their moans turn to growls, and more decayed bodies rush ahead and weave through the vehicles and wreckage. Under the blaze of the morning sun and the clear Colorado sky, the chemical smell of burnt grease mixes with the stench of rot. The hill rises to the west so steep you can't see the top, and the dense clumps of spruce and pine stand maze-like. Benji and Nathan are first up the 50-yard slope, maneuvering through the low branches and clearing a path for the others. Rachel, Gina, and Jamie fire down at the undead ahead of the mob giving time for the rest of the survivors to start up the incline. Looking back, he watches the last of the infected rush from the highway and field. Not enough were killed by the two teams of survivors, and the writhing horde poses a real threat as they lay chase. Let's go, Ma! Riley shouts over the clamor of the infected. He holds her under one arm and leads her with careful steps up the rise. The woman's face shows her struggle, and she digs her cane into the loose dirt as her feet shuffle along the cleared path. I'm trying, Riley, she says in a shaky voice. Parker and Kelly maneuver up the incline, while Brody and Madison rush ahead through a thicker part of the forested hill. Where are you two going? Nathan yells to the twins as he rips a branch down from a tree. Scouting the top of the hill, Brody says. There could be zombies up there. The horde flows through the caravan like river water around stones. They ignore the vehicles and focus on the sight and scent and sounds of the living drawn by an unseen force to bite and infect. Their faces bear the marks of decay and those in front show teeth as they bark in primal madness, while those behind follow in a languid par parade of death. They move towards your group with no thoughts of their own but pulled by the gathering until it's their turn for a taste of flesh. The crack, pop, and boom of gunfire rips through the forest in sonic waves and the bodies of the first few undead fall to the dirt and tumble down the incline, dragging those behind them. At the base of the hill, Bailey, Church, and Woody fight back the zombies making the incline. As the zombie horde swarms the bottom of the hill, you consider the possible actions you can take. You could join the team defending the hill, helping to kill off the horde and giving time for the non-fighters of the group to climb the hill, or you can rally them to fight, inspiring and actively relieving up in order to decrease their morale. You could help it clear a path to the top, which would allow the others to reach it faster. You gaze across the hill at Riley and Nora. While he helps her up the hill, the group loses a capable fighter. The faster she makes it up the hill, the sooner Riley can help deal with the horde. Or you can head up to the top of the hill by yourself. 
it's safer at the top. Or at least that's the current theory. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, rally survivors kill infected. Oh, I wish we could set an explosive, but apparently we're not capable of doing that. Help Nora up the hill, join team of defenders, kill zombies. Help Nathan and Benji clear a path up the hill. Okay, I'm gonna help clear a path up the hill. You move into the narrow path your two companions are creating through the forest and the wavy line up the hill. Both work with a flurry of activity. Benji is cutting aside the floor and Nathan clearing it aside. You draw your machete and use it to slice through branches and clear away dead leaves. As you climb, the steep angle of the hill and shifting dirt makes it like running on sand, where each unsure step is twice as hard. Mm. More of the infected rush from the caravan, hitting the incline in a tidal wave of diseased flesh. Your bodies swarm over the dirt hill and rise on sheer numbers, pushed from behind and carried up on the swell. The group at the bottom of the hill is forced backwards up the incline, but remain in the lower section to keep the horde at bay. We're not going to make it! We gotta run! Church turns and starts up the hill through the cleared path. Out of ammo! Jamie shouts and slings his submachine gun over his shoulder. A zombie runs up the hill at him, passing gunfire from other survivors and lunges. Jamie catches the deceased man by the throat, lifts him in the air, feet dangling over the dirt terrain. With a barbaric cry, Jamie tosses the zombie into the horde below, knocking them down like bowling pins. Oh wow, good job Jamie. Rachel tosses a handheld object over her shoulder like a football. It floats over the horde and lands far behind the caravan into a dense pack of infected. Live grenade, she shouts, and a moment later, an explosion rips through the pack of undead, sending up smoke and body parts in a flash of light and knocking down those nearby. Nathan and Benji hack their way through the forest in a straight line towards the summit. Ahead of the group rises a sheer face of the hill, 10 to 20 degrees higher than the rest. Brody and Madison have reached already, choosing to go ahead of the rest of the survivors. Help! You hear and spot Nora on the ground 20 yards up the hill. She holds her chin with one hand and the root of a tree with the other to hold herself from rolling down the incline. Oh, she's holding her shin, not her chin. My apologies. Just down the hill from her, Riley fights off an infected by bashing his skull in with his mother's ca metal cane. With the horde now rising up the hill, you need to decide what to do next. You could help defend the hill and thin the horde, and that still presents the largest threat you face to date. You could rally the survivors to fight, motivating them to defend the hill. Or if you fear the hill is lost, you could order a retreat and save as many as possible. And then there's Nora. You need to step in and save her before it's too late. I am going to go help Nora. You rush to Nora's side. When you reach her, you loop your arms around her armpits and set her up. Thank you, dear, she says as she catches her breath. Through the sounds of the infected swell through the forest. The fear has gone from her eyes. If you help me up, I can make it on my own to the top. You crouch behind her and lift her with her legs. Nora springs to her feet, one, one motion. Once she's stable, you take her arms away and she rests the hand against a tree breeze and a few huffs of forest air. A thin, of li oh. a thin line of blood trickles down her shin. Ma, are you all right? Riley asks, running up. He wipes blood from a cane with a Colorado River beach towel. I'm fine, no thanks to you. She grabs a cane from his hand and gives her son a light whack when it, with it across his arm. You took my cane. A zombie was coming. I had no choice. Riley's voice takes on a high childlike pitch. You could have given me a longer than a second before you snatched it away. Something, seeing the look of exasperation on Riley's face, Nora pats his shoulder. You did what you had to do. Thank you, boy. And thank you, Chloe. Now both of you stop standing around like lawn ornaments and walk me up this hill. Can't believe how steep it's gotten. As you listen to Nora and Riley, you think about why you helped her. Uh, saving a life is the right thing to do. Yeah, totally. Yep. You grab Nora's free arm and the three of you start up the incline. Thank you, Chloe, Riley says with a tall smile. At times, the hill slopes at a higher angle, forcing Nora to put more weight on you and Riley. You struggle to keep yourself from faltering as you support the old woman. Before she puts on Pachit's foot ahead, you kick away stones and feel for unseen obstacles that might endanger her movement. Behind you come constantly snarls and gunfire. 
Push through the three of you farther up the path to what you only assume is safety, past the edge of the hill. If I'd known we'd be hiking, I would have, I would have worn my boots. Nor, nor let's have a sh short, tired chuckle. And though she tries to make light of the trek, you see wear on her face and hear the tiredness in her voice. You got it, Ma. Look, you're almost there, Riley says, his voice upbeat, but his face showing sadness. I know I'm close to the top, dummy. My eyes still work, Nora says through labor breaths. This gets a broad smile from Riley. I know you're all right if you're busting my co-jones. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. Past the hill's midpoint, her legs quiver and arms shake as you hold her. Each careful footstep is harder than the next, and not until she nears the summit does she stop. Now help me sit, Nora says, and you, you and Riley lowered her to flat stone on foot off the ground. That's the most exercise I've had since I streaked that Stones concert in 93. <laughs> oh, oh, Grandma, or Nora. You, yeah. wow. She went streaking at a Rolling Stones concert. <laughs> oh, you're my favorite. Once she sits, Riley takes out a pack of tissues from his back pocket and hands them to his mother. She takes one, reaches out, and squeezes Riley's hand with a weak smile. Thank you, Chloe. You were a lifesaver. She dabs some sweat from her brow. Now both of you get your asses out of here and help the others. You spent enough time catering to an old lady. Have we? But Nora. The infected pour from the highway past the caravan and up the hill. And you finally see an end to their numbers. These aren't just campers and road workers. They are police and aid workers, farmers and ranchers, teachers and lawyers, citizens of the outbreak of all shapes and sizes and colors and former creeds, fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, and every shade of good and evil that made up the world just days ago. These are your fellow citizens who were working, going to school, progressing in another way of life. Those thoughts and struggles and drives are no more replaced by a single, ultimate, inescapable one. Hunger. You look around the hill at your fellow survivors. The defenders have risen to the midpoint of the hill and form a new line from which to hold back the advancing horde. Nathan has cleared a path to the top, making it easier for all to climb. Benji is moving back down the hill to help the others still defending against the horde. A rush of zombies branch off from the horde and stagger up a ridge on the western face of the hill flanking the small group of defenders. From the front, a new wave of infected scrambled through the thin forest, targeting each survivor. You need to figure out what to do next. If you fight with the defenders, will you be able to kill the horde? What of the pack rushing the defenders from their blind side? Diverting some survivors will stop the surprise attack, but it also might weaken the main defense. Can you defeat the pack yourself instead? I don't know, can we? Also, I just want to say, Holy crap, this is more intense than the first game. There's a lot more action than we're dealing with. A shit ton more of having to fight and kill zombies. It seems more than we had to do in the last game. Kill a survivor? Why would I kill a survivor? Okay, I'll, I'll fight off the flanking pack and myself. I hope I don't die. Not to draw away defenders from eliminating the horde, you rush to meet the pack of undead. The uneven ground proves challenging for the disease attackers, but their pure desire to feed sends them straight for the group of defenders, who maintain their focus on the rising horde. You rush through the forest and prepare to attack. I'm gonna use my machete. These zombies leave the pack and move in a straight line as the rear of the hill defenders. The terrain isn't slowing them down and they're closing in on the bats of your group members. You raise your machete and time your first swing for the approach of the lead zombie. With a quick slash, you drop him to the ground and you roll several yards before hitting a chunk of a pine. You lash out at the next in line, ending his prolonged life. The third infected dies forward, arms outstretched, hands at your throat. Dodging sideways, you spin and strike the back of his head, dropping him into the forest floor. Four more infected scamper through the woods, their movement hampered by the slope of the forest floor. You weave your weapon in a pattern of trained movements, 
Your first strike rips through a scalp, continues on and slashes open the throat of another. You spin and swing, decapitating a zombie. As the next lunges, your slash finds us home in the base of its victim's skull. And she tumbles the weapon stuck in her head. My god, we're so badass! I have faith. We're not gonna die at all. She's Our character is so badass, and she knows how to kill the zombies. As the rest of the zombies scramble to reach you, your machete lays them all to the rest. The defenders blow li little, know little of the threat they face, but you've given them the time they need to fight against the horde. Long, desperate minutes have passed with a group of survivors on a hill over a highway somewhere on the outskirts of Nightfall, Colorado. The unliving push up the hillside in their eternal calling to feed. The raw surge drives them forward, but their died oh, but their dead lie underfoot, trampled by the weight of their still animated siblings. Their body is driven into the dirt as if buried. Parker and Riley reach the top of Nathan, and the three create a human chain up their steepest part of the hill to help other survivors clear the summit. With a sudden urge, surge, the infected charge the defending survivors, and you watch as two opposing sides collide from your spot near the summit. Woody stands at the front of your group, and a pack of living dead attack him first. Oh! Oh shit, no, not Woody! Please don't die, Woody! I don't want you to die! They drag him down to the ground and you hear his scream from the bottom. How he calls out Jamie's name until the creatures strike too deeply. Oh no. You sons of bitches. You raise your machete, machete at Woody's feet are but slowly lower it. He's gone and you have to focus on saving the other survivors now. Ah, oh, fuck. Another scream rises through the forest, and Jamie runs toward his cousin and a group of feeding zombies. He makes it a few yards before a pair of zombies block its path. He drives a sharpened stick through one's head and throws a shoulder into another, launching him through the air and down the hill. The blow knocks Jamie to the ground as Woody's cries stop, and the infected have calmed in the glory of their feeding. Uh, Jamie's hand reaches through the air like he could touch his cousin under the pile of gnawing teeth. Run back! Run up the hill! Bailey, Bailey shouts as she slams her bat across the head of infected. The wooden weapon cracks, sending out tall splinters. She crosses one arm to shield her face and backs into a tree. A swarm of zombies run into her and their first bites into her arm down to the bone. Bailey shudders in pain, mouth agape, but she doesn't cry out. Her other hand jams a shard of the broken bat into the zombie's eye. Another takes his place, kneeling to drive his mouth into her stomach. As another zombie pins her head back to her sink her teeth into Bailey's throat, a shot cracks the air. And the bullet to the back of the skull ends a young woman's life. Shit. From across the dirt track of the swarming forest, Rachel lowers her rifle. The rest of the survivors abandon the low point of the hill and take the higher ground. You turn to swing at the closest infected. A college-aged woman, she falls a dirt floor out of view. The rest of the survivors look haggard and sullen, watching the deaths of their groupmates and having no time to react, to grieve. Your next buddy, Nathan says, and offers his hand to Benji, the next survivor in line. I got this man, the doctor says, waving the hand away and jumps up the short cliff face. His foot doesn't reach high enough and he falls flat to the dirt. No! Nathan dives to catch his hand, but Benji is already gone, sliding as fast as a rocket down the slope into the horde. His body disappears under a gang of infected, and no one even hears his screams. Oh my god. It's already three people! Shit, this is happening way too fast. The top of the summit leads to a wide clearing where the group holds as the zombies continue their climb, only to fall at the peak of the incline. They have no way to reach you, making this the safest spot you've been for a while. Past the clearing lies a dense forest, and you can only hope that it's deserted. You stand high on a flat stone rock and call it to the survivors. Great job, everyone. Let's take care of the few remaining and gather together on the summit. Great job, Nathan shouts. People died. What good did we do? Ugh. Well, you're still alive, I guess. As you look over the small Colorado hill and the combined hordes shambling and clawing their way, you can't help but wonder where they all came from. Did they leave their homes in one communal calling and move together to scour the earth for the living? Or is it just nature or relocation of sorts from an area where the living have been purged, 
so the dead search for a more suitable area to find vessels for the virus? God damn it, I don't know, man. I'm... I... Okay. Alright. Alright. I'm ending the chapter here. That was way too much that happens in this video and I'm a bit shaken up. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna end the episode here. Uh thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please hit that button down below and go into the description there will be a link to my lovely Michael's channel. Go show him some love and go show him some support. He does amazing on his channel and he's good at what he does. So go check him out and thank you guys so much for watching. Stay awesome. Bye.